is private land. That is the board fence. And that private land at that time was just like you saw it in that photograph. Almost not a tree standing. And only a few, a few, uh, only a few trees. Now, the orders are going to come down to the storming party. Our person who was in the 54th Mass would know the orders are you will load your you will load your weapon, but you will not cap the weapon. They want once the movement forward starts, they want nobody to stop. They want to keep the big momentum going. So that means in the storming party, you'll keep moving. You will not halt and fire. So that is why you've uh, uh, you have not positioned their cap on your weapon. And you've got your, you've got your bayoneted rifle, and you're supposed to go not halt, and you're not going to stop till you can reach that stone wall. Now, uh, some of the people particularly don't like that order. <laughs> <laughs> and you're going to have some good, uh, some pretty good sergeants like uh, Bill Gwaltney and say, no. Cap, let's cap our pieces. But the orders are not to cap your pieces. And they're going to advance. And the advance is going to begin simultaneously between the right storming column, the 60, headed by the 61st Pennsylvania. Uh, will the Colonel of the 61st Pennsylvania put up his hand? Because Colonel Spear doesn't have long to live. <laughs> In fact, he is not even going to reach the stone wall. Now, Saint Colonel St. John, that's him, of the seventh mass, and you're going to only get wounded. Now, they're going to come forward, and you can imagine the Mississippians first, with Barksdale looking proudly on, feel pretty good about it. As they can see, the lead companies and the, lead, and the people at the head of the column are melting away. Killed, wounded, and not advancing any further. But, just as the rebels are beginning to feel pretty cocky about it, Colonel Allen, remember, there are the four regiments to the left with one the lead regiment are going to come forward in line of battle the two support regiments will be in line of battle and the reserve regiment is going to come forward in line of battle and while Barksdale is feeling pretty good about what he sees it as they have stopped the two storming columns they probably have got none of them any closer than about a hundred yards to the stone wall. On both the Hanover Road, the closest to us, and the and that's how we will we'll go out one of those roads uh, when we leave here, and the other on the uh, road that is known as the uh, the uh, the Orange Plank Road. They have been stopped in their tracks, and. Uh, Colonel Allen will address his men. Tell them, I want no faltering. When we start forward, we are going to let a tiger, just like you guys in the 54th Mass did, and we're going and we're not going to stop until we're over the wall. So the Confederates have been cheering too soon because Burnham's men with the third, with the uh, six main, uh, with the third Wisconsin out in front, supported by the fifth uh, Maine and the 61st, the uh, 62nd uh, Pennsylvania, are going over the wall. And when they go over the wall, the Confederates are going to break, and the Confederates are going to flee up these slopes. 
and they're going to lose their eight cannon. Confederates will lose Colonel Griffin, that naive chap, right there, and 250 of his men are going to be captured. The Confederates are going to have about 650 casualties. Counting the prisoners, the Yankees, it'll cost them over 1,500 men. But they have captured Marie's Heights. Now, Sedgwick does not. He has the same problem that McClellan. He doesn't immediately push on. General, General Uri, men, when they, when they broke the Uri's line here, the Confederates will fall back in a southwesterly direction.